Welcome back here to the Undisclosed Location. Jordy Collada Show presented every day by Ghost Chevrolet. Couple of guests in the Undisclosed Location today. Two of our favorites, Hunt Palmer, stopped by in hour number one. And it's always good to see our guy, Representative John Stefanski, who is uh, representing our state up at the state capitol, obviously. And uh, legislative session is uh, set to go. He is uh, he's from the, uh, the Crowley area, which is uh, a hotbed of, of politicians from our state. Uh, from the Acadian area, we we're just talking about Frank Wilson. Uh, it's good to see you. Yeah, good as morning. well, man. Morning, yeah, y'all, uh, y'all beefed up uh, security outside. Yeah. I see. <laughs> yes. um, we did. We the did. barbed wire got higher, but the Thank the you. dogs are actually nicer. Yeah. They recognize me. This well, time. I mean, you, you've been by, and which we appreciate so much, and told the dogs about has been your loyalty. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> we've seen some of the screenshot text messages that have come across from some people asking on where the location is. And your loyalty and, and, and ability to keep your mouth shut is very political of you and very uh, endearing to the Jordy Collada show. So you've always got a space here. You know, uh, the pressure has been unbelievable. <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, every Everybody who watches the show has been hammering me on, on where the location is and uh, – and where uh, where this is at, and uh, I've, I've saved tight lips, you know, and and we we can't break the we can't break the trust, and you know, and, that, and and for that you are you are always <laughs> welcome here, Representative. Is and to some see good you. friends, some really <laughs> no, close no, friends, want to know, and I, I and I've held that. out, so uh, it's been fun. I it's see that fun. the loyalty, man, it's very Italian of you. Uh, somewhere along the way, you've got to have some Italian blood. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're but, talking to Coach Frank, though. Yeah, yeah, we're they, talking to Coach Wilson, and 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 you know that part of the state, you know our entire part of the state, but. You, you're, you're so familiar with that part uh, of Southwest Louisiana. Uh, for, for him to say out loud the stuff that, that the people have dealt with, forget the football program, just the entire community and people of that part of our state, and to hear them talking about getting prepared to play football this weekend yeah. is incredible. It it's really amazing is. that they're even able to, to do some of that yeah. stuff. You know, I, I, I passed through going this weekend on my way to Houston, um, and – just kind of took a detour to go through the city a little bit and it, it it's it's really shocking if you haven't been there in a while because the trees are still down they still haven't picked up debris P- uh half the people don't have roofs you know i mean it, it's just it's stuff that like the rest of the state probably has thought oh they're good you yeah. know they're good it's been months since the hurricane hit but it, it really is still uh devastating down there and um and if if you have the ability to be able to donate and help somebody out down there if you have friends or family Offer, you know, offer, yeah. call them and say, hey, look, can we come up one weekend and help you? Because it, it really is crazy riding around the city to see how how much they have to go. I mean, yeah. and so like you talked about, when we're talking about playing sports and we're talking about playing football, I mean, people are still just trying to get a, a roof over their head. Sure. So it, it's it's crazy. I think half of the, you know, the, their apartment market has been totally devastated. I was talking to somebody the other day about that. So if you don't own something there, just trying to find a place to live if you have to work in Lake Charles is, is, is rough. From a political standpoint, I, I know that all of you are up at, at the Capitol representing your area, your people, and, and your issues. What, what, is, what, what is the feel? Because I've seen the way that, that, that everybody up there kind of embraces one another. It's, it's much like a, a, a high school feel. It has a very it much a, of a, a, a communal feel to it. Um, when when a, a section of our state is devastated as it is how does has the efforts and energy turn towards supporting and helping much and and all the while taking care of the issues yeah no i mean look we we all tried to rally around our friends from that part of the state uh you know that's real close to me i, I live in crowley i yeah. mean it's that's right down the street from me in in essence but uh a couple of good friends of mine uh, Stephen dwight who's now the district attorney at calcasieu parish you know like we, we just would ask him, you know, call him, what can we do? What can we donate? Just trying to ask. Uh, but it is, you develop these relationships at the Capitol. People often ask me, you know, what's the best part about the job? Number one, the best part about the job is meeting the people. You yeah. meet, uh, you know, especially in the House, you get to meet 104 people from around the state and, and become close with a lot of those people who become lifelong friends. And, and when somebody's hurting like that, when their home gets destroyed and their parents' home and things like that, you, you really try to rally around them and, and help out as much as you can. And so that's what we've tried to do. You know, we've we've donated as much as we can from a from a legislative standpoint. We, we've tried to adjust some things, especially, you know, where we do have some available funds. We've tried to push those towards Lake Charles to be able to help them rebuild, especially the, their schools and, and essential things like that. And then we've also just tried to 
you know, look out for them and in, in, in other kind of ways, any kind of legislation that might help that area, we're, we're definitely looking forward to try to help them. April 12th, you guys get going at the, uh, the yeah. state legislative session. I, I mean, what is, there's so many issues, I guess. What is, is there an overriding theme going in? There's, there's a ton, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it seems like I was just there, you know, we were just in a special session yeah. this last fall. Um, I've actually been, I feel like I'm a resident. I feel like, I, I feel like I'm here now because since I, January, I like every time I go downtown, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been probably, I've been in Baton Rouge since January, uh, probably, you know, double the time I've been back home. It's just, there's so much stuff to get prepared for. There's so many bills, uh, you know, my committee, there's a lot of things I have to get ready for. So it's just, it's had me in Baton Rouge a lot. And, you know, you talked about that kind of high school atmosphere. That's what it's like. You know, the first day of session is really like your first day of high school. You walk in, all these people you haven't seen in a while. Some new faces. Yeah, you know, and and there's a lot of catching up. There's a lot of how's your family and what's going on with you, how's work and all that. And so it's it it can be fun, but then we quickly have to get to work. Uh, You know, one of the big issues I think is going to be tax reform. This is a fiscal session. So we're going into a session to where every other year we have the ability to be able to adjust taxes and fees. And we're really trying to modernize our tax code from a, a corporate standpoint. That's one of the things you're going to see. One of the big things is currently we're one of only two states in the entire nation, us in Colorado, that don't collect sales tax from a centralized place. And that might sound like, well, you know, why is that such a big deal? Well, if you own a small business, especially one that operates in all the parishes, um, you have to have the ability, you, you know, you have to file a different tax return in all 64 parishes. What? Okay. And it's not really 64 because a couple parishes have combined, but you can see how difficult that can be for a business. Sure. You have to have an employee basically that understands the tax rates in every single one of those parishes Holy and then has to file a different return for your sales tax in all of those. And so it's a reason we're only one of two. All the other states have moved forward and changed that. We haven't done that here. We still collect it locally. The second issue is there was this Wayfair decision. It was a Supreme Court decision a couple years ago, which basically said that we have the ability to force out-of-state companies to remit their sales tax that they collect here. Okay, Um, Before that, unless you actually physically had a place of business here in Louisiana, we couldn't force you to collect sales tax. With there's two things why that's important. Number one, Louisiana is a sales tax state. That's how we get the, a, a tremendous amount of our revenue. That's how our citizens like it. When I ask people, hey, how would you rather pay taxes? You want to pay property tax? No, 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 I want to do that. You want to pay income tax? No, 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 I don't really like that one. Or sales tax. Well, I don't like sales tax, but that's the best one. People think it's a fair system. It's a, it's a user pay system. So if the more stuff you want to buy, the more yeah. taxes you're going to pay. Yeah. Um, well, with that said, as our economy moves more and more online, where I mean that's what we all do. Every you know, I order. I don't think I go to a store to buy clothes anymore unless it's like a suit or something like that. Uh, everything's coming online, and uh, we have to have the ability as a state to be to make it competitive. All right. So if you're going online and you're not paying sales tax, but the business down the street who's employing people and they're doing everything the right way, collecting their sales tax, they have to charge you a sales tax. It's an unfair advantage. Mm. Um, And so with a centralized system, it gives us a better playing field to be able to collect those taxes and also make it a fair, you know, just a fair playing field across the board. So I think it's important. And it's a it's one of those issues that's revenue neutral. You know, it's not going to raise anybody's taxes, but it would have a huge impact on it, not only modernizing our system but also our efficiency and attracting businesses to come here to louisiana if that changes if that in if that goes in into um into works how long does it take that to be implemented you know so it's basically as quick as we can do it so what it would be is it would be a constitutional amendment this year okay which would go on the ballot because like louisiana where we like to lock everything in the constitution this is one of the things that we've locked into the constitution as well the way we collect our sales tax so the voters would have to approve it um and then after that we would set up again like we do a lot of things the regulations behind that but this is this is such an important thing uh, i think from a state perspective we would roll very quickly on this if the voters would approve it. Um, sports gambling. A lot of yeah. our audience is is very much paying attention to this this topic and this debate. Where are we? It seems like we were gaining momentum as as far as the legalization and and getting close to it. Where 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 is it? And how do you feel going into the session? Yeah, so four parishes. Last time we talked, and then since then, you know, that's been dominating a lot of my uh, a lot okay. of my time up at the Capitol. Okay. Uh, is trying to figure out all the variables. So. 
you haven't seen any bills filed for a reason, and it's because this is it's it's just very complicated. To a you know, if I wasn't in the legislature and I was just outside looking in, which is the perspective I love to keep, um, I'd be going, what what's what's the big deal? Legalize it. It shouldn't be that complicated. Well, it is. So first of all, who's going to get the licenses? Okay, so I'm looking at all these other states on how they set everything up. They normally award the licenses to a set amount of people, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. You could award an unlimited amount of licenses and allow all kind of different people around the state to get one. So what does that mean? I mean, do we want sports books in every bar and every every restaurant and all that? Do we want that level? Or is that you like know, London? <laughs> that like London? I mean, you know, you can you can sit down and bet on anything in London. Yeah. You can, but I mean, there's a, I, in my opinion, the actual sports book. So when we think of showing up somewhere with all the lines and all the TVs and all that, that is traditionally happens, you know, kind of in your casinos mm-hmm. in your in your traditional gaming yep. establishments. So you know, we're we're looking at that. Then there gets Ooh, the like ability, <laughs> the highest <laughs> bidder gets the ability to have the mobile license. There's another element we talked about last time mobile okay i'm still a firm believer unless we have full mobile the ability to be able to bet on your phone this really isn't going to raise much money for the state okay Mm -hmm. so i'm a i'm a big proponent of that well that's great but there's a lot of intricacies on how you set up full mobile okay and then third as i'm looking at all these other states uh what we with this growing trend we see when we talked about a sports book in every bar and all these other Mm -hmm. things well, what we're seeing out of these other states is they're doing these kiosks, okay? So you have your traditional sports books in your, in your gaming establishments, but you also have the ability to go to a, a bar or a restaurant and have this kiosk where you can go to the machine, put your money in, and place a bet. And right. so who gets those? Who gets the mobile license? You know, because we've looked at other states. We had, there's one state recently that put it up for auction. They basically said, we only want one provider of mobile. We don't want all this competition give it the highest bidder and it's a very profitable way to do it because what what happens is let's say you have 20 of these mobile operators they're all competing against each other they're all undercutting each other and when they undercut and they lower their profit margin well the state doesn't get as much because if they don't make as much money the state doesn't make as much money and eventually there'll be a winner but how long is that going to take so there's just a ton of things that go into this and that you know stuff that I didn't even really fully sure. understand. And then on on my side, you know, um I'm I'm going to carry the tax portion because when we passed it we said it has to be taxed. So nobody likes taxes, but this has to be taxed. There's there's no other way that it will be enacted without it. And then the appropriations part, which is where does the money go? Mm. So I'm going to try to handle those two elements in my bill. And then again, complicated as well what's that tax rate going to be? I'm looking around the rest of the country, you know, and trying to figure out what is a reasonable tax rate to be able to put. How is, is there going to be the same tax rate on the casinos who maybe have a full sports book versus the guys who are just doing a mobile application versus the guy that maybe just has a kiosk in his bar. So it is, it is complicated, but the, the actual sports betting bill, whatever form that will take, has to be filed by Friday. It has to be filed by the end of the week. So you're going to see a version out then. I hope mine's ready for Friday too because my bill has to mirror the regulation bill because you can't have a regulation bill which sets up all these parameters without mirroring that on the tax and appropriation side. And so those two bills kind of have to be linked together. Um, So I'm kind of in a holding pattern until I know you know, what that other bill is going to look like. But we're working on it. It will be filed. I'm, I'm telling you, that's one, of my, that's one of my main priorities this session is making sure that we get that legalized and get it passed. I've heard from so many constituents and so many just people around the state who want it. Um, it's, you know, it's, we're watching other states do it, and, and we need to keep up with the other states in that area. That we had area. somebody tweet at us and ask, why hasn't there been more bills placed around this, this topic is it because of kind of what you explained? Because of just I, th- I the, think it's the both grasp the scope of the yeah you know look it's it's both and it's and then another reason primarily uh, the Senate president who who has some stroke around the Capitol sure. <laughs> he's a he's a pretty powerful guy he has decided he's filing one and so we're in a in a fiscal year we only get five bills that's all we get so you have to be pretty selective about your bills i mean five might sound like a lot but i i actually started off i think with about 15 and i've had to trim down to five it's very difficult to do that 
And when you only have five bills, you want to make sure they have the best opportunity to pass. And so I think if if you're another legislator and you're looking around and you realize that the Senate president's filing this bill, his probably has a pretty good chance of passing. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, and, and on that same note, I've decided that I'm going to team up with the Senate president. Well, and so I'm going to mirror his bill because I think his has the best opportunity to pass. So you're talking about the, the Senate president and the chair of the House and Governmental Affairs Committee, which is probably recognized as one of the most powerful seats in that in that building. In redistricting year, yes. In a redistricting <laughs> yes, year. It's, it's a pretty teaming good Teaming up on one bill. So you're in a good place. Redistricting, I know that that is something yeah. that only comes up once a decade. You're the chair of that committee that oversees that. Um, I'd imagine that that is a topic that is as thorough as the one you just explained. Yeah, you know, so since w- w- when the speaker appointed me to that, since January, kind of, you know, we talked on that a little bit last time, but I, I've been meeting Coffee's with... Coffee's ready. Hey, coffee's ready, yes, good. Sir. Sorry. <laughs> We've been, I've met with 90, I think 95 of the 104 members, because obviously I'm one, there's 105 since January, in about 30 to 45 minute intervals, trying to get everybody's perspective on what the expectations are going into the year, and, and it's been extremely helpful for me. I've learned a lot about the state. I've learned a lot about people's districts. Um, but we're still in a holding pattern until we get the numbers. Uh, they tell us we're going to get the appropriation numbers, which tells us um, how many congressmen we're going to have, which we, we expect to keep that same number. But we're supposed to get that in April. And then we're going to get the numbers that we actually need to redraw the districts by the end of September. So those are the two numbers hmm. we're looking at. Uh, so we got some time. Yeah. You know, we, we got a little bit of time. Uh, we Our constitutional mandate hasn't even been triggered yet. Uh, that's not going to come in until if we get the numbers in April, that means we have until the end of 2022 to redraw these districts. So we have some time. Uh, it, it gives me it, it's great for me because it gives me a lot of opportunity to meet with members, make sure I'm hearing everyone's perspective so we can we can make this as fair, transparent, you know, according to the numbers process as possible. Would it have helped you to be able to be out and get on the road for, for that? That yeah, seat. and I still have I still have plans to do that. Uh-huh. So my plan, let's say we get those numbers in in September, um, and, and they're telling us that's at the earliest. We're gonna traditionally we've done what we call a road show, where we literally travel the state sure. and do these mini meetings in all different ge- geographical places around the state to try to hear from the locals about what they want to let the representatives have an opportunity to talk to their locals about what they want so we plan on doing that i, I plan on traveling the state pretty heavily uh, coming yeah. up this next year uh, which is it's important because this is something as i've learned redistricting when you're redrawing especially you know think about my district um somebody if i wasn't in charge of this committee somebody else is telling me who where I have to run and who gets to vote for me. That's a personal, personal thing. Mm. And uh, when something is that personal, uh, it, people's emotions get involved. Yeah. And so you want to make sure everyone has a voice in this process. Everyone is heard and everyone gets an opportunity to give their own comment. It is uh, always great to see our friend, Representative John Stefanski, who is in the undisclosed location talking some politics and some of the, the issues that the, uh, the legislators will be facing and uh, filing uh, coming up in this legislative session that takes place and gets going on April 12th. Uh, we have started the past two weeks of shows uh, getting into major sports news, but we can't get past what Zion Williamson is accomplishing and what is he, he is developing into down in New Orleans. You are a, uh, a huge hoop head like we are. You love the sport. Love it. Um, and you love the Pelicans. Um, I believe we've got Michael Jordan sitting in our backyard at 20 years old. I mean, the next decade for, for my son, I can't, I got to pinch myself all the time in, in, in saying what he's got an opportunity to watch because he is, he is extraordinary. I mean, oh, he just doesn't exist. And I don't feel like he's getting highlighted enough. I mean, I know you, you talk about him all the time, you know, in Louisiana, we like to talk about him, but when the Pelicans got off to kind of a rough start and they lost some games, I feel like the national audience just kind of checked out. Checked out. Yeah. Like uh, the Pel- wrote the Pelicans off. They started talking about how we were going to trade all of our players. You know, I think within two weeks, you know, of the, of the season. And what he's doing is unbelievable. You mm-hmm. tell me if if he didn't play for the Lakers or New York, even Chicago, sco- yeah, any <laughs> any major city, you know, and he's scoring thirty five points a game as a as a twenty year old. He wouldn't be on Sports Center every night, yeah. highlight leading the, leading the uh, the newsreel, but but that's okay. He's yeah, our guy. That's that's, that's all right. That's exactly you know, he's our right. guy. And, and I tell you, look, uh, Stan Van Gundy when he came in, and he's he's gotten a lot of criticism this year because you know maybe we haven't done as well as people thought we were supposed to do. Yeah, but. 
the reason Zion is getting highlighted so much is is that shift to that point forward, yeah, no like doubt. he allowed him to do, and and that stand, you know, and, and and that's something we didn't see under Alvin Gentry, and it's he has unleashed Zion, he really has, because if you watch Zion last year. Zion really played back to the basket. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would turn his shoulders and go to the hoop and get blocked a lot. Yeah. You know, his, his size hurts him when he's not going downhill. And I think you saw uh, Van Gundy uh, recognize that. He's, he's putting Zion down, downhill as much as he Put can. Put him in the open field. And he's unstoppable. He is I unstoppable. Mean, uh, Rick Carlisle made that great his, quote the his other day. It's were great. Yeah, he's just like, I mean, what, what do you do with the guy? Shaquille you know? O'Neal with point guard skills. Yeah, and, I mean, and that's how he is. Why, my favorite thing to do is when Zion makes contact with someone who tries to stop him at the rim, Zion – it doesn't change anything about him. Everyone else flies Straight off. Straight up, him. yeah. I mean, Tristan Thompson, six eight, two sixty. He was like a fly on him. <laughs> he went up and tried to block his shot. Um, how about the tournament? You pay much attention to March Madness? I did. You know what I mean? Look, yeah. and obviously, I, I, you know, when LSU went out, you know, I was I was watching LSU so close. I have this tendency. I guess it's just the Louisiana in me. When when LSU gets knocked yeah. out of stuff, I don't know if it's a depression I go into, yeah. or it maybe is just a little bit of. You know, I just don't care as much anymore. But uh, I'm watching it. Obviously, I'm kept keeping up on Sports Center. I haven't been as heavily involved as as when LSU was in there. I was I was disappointed with with our seating and then also with with uh, how we played. Even though I, I think we did play well, yeah. but uh, but how we finished there. So I haven't been watching it nearly as close as I was. Sure. Maybe if you had asked me a week ago. Uh, but I know we have half of our our Final Four set yes. now. Uh, two uh, two Texas teams uh, in Houston and Baylor, and then tonight. Uh, Gonzaga, USC, and it'll be Michigan and uh, UCLA. I mean, Michigan, the, the number one seed that, that LSU fell to. What's your what's your smart money on? I know everyone says Gonzaga. They they say it's an inevitable thing that they're going to win. What do you think? I think Gonzaga's national championship is tonight. Okay. I think if they can beat USC, because I think USC is a just a, a nightmare of a matchup for a lot of people, um, and specifically Gonzaga. I think if Gonzaga gets past tonight, this will be their toughest matchup because they've looked like a G League team yeah. from the time that this start. The only thing is the the thing you have to watch is that they haven't been they they've not been in real a lot of competition. They've been not been in a lot of competitive games. They've blown a lot of people out. And tonight, I'd imagine we'll go through some windows of it's going to be highly competitive. Yeah, they're going to have to be locked in. Um, That's an exciting one to watch. And yeah. uh, on another note, I know you were talking about Walker Howard earlier. Yes. Uh, who's that's obviously STM. Yeah. It's close to me. I get yeah. to watch a lot of their games. I've gotten to, I, my little cousin actually plays and is is buddies with Walker. Okay, yeah, my cousin Jack Stefanski is a, a running back on the on the team. Wow. and uh, he was a little banged up this year, but uh, loaded. Coach. He should get a good run next he year. Like you. Uh, he is much bigger than me. That's impossible. <laughs> impossible. Wow. Yeah, he's Jack. I saw him the other day. Every time I see him, he gets a little bit taller than me. So he's probably six one, closing in on six one. And he's probably got, he's probably got another ten pounds on me. So, All football. Uh, uh, no, he's a really good baseball player really? too. Yeah, he's in the he's in the middle of his baseball season now too. But anyway, Walker's his buddy, and so I hear a lot of updates on Walker. Hey, and and y'all talked about the sports aspect. Everything I hear about the kid from a personality yeah. standpoint he is unbelievable, unbelievable. A, just a great person and you, you always love to see that Absolutely. you know uh when they're a good athlete but they also are, are raised right and have and 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 really are a good person that's awesome to see very mature i mean some of the things that he's gone through off the field losing his mother yep. and, and some of the decisions he's had to make around that uh, have have shown off his maturity a, as well jack besh who's coming oh, yeah. over to lsu we had mickey joseph on a couple of weeks back and joseph's the wide receivers coach yep. and 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 he said they've already got the plan in place for Besh on how they're going to use him next year. I mean, I it wasn't I didn't ask him if he was going to play as a freshman. He's like <laughs> they've already got the package built in yeah. for this. I I think he's going to be one of the the underrated contributors for LSU. He's a guy that's going to have to always earn his respect, but once he gets there, he's going to fit in, man. He's as dominant of a high school player as I've ever seen. I, I, I saw, like I said, I, I've seen a few of their games and, and just watching how unguardable he is yeah. in high school and really the physicality. I mean, they would play they would play good teams, and I mean, he would throw cornerbacks to the ground, and you're looking and you're like, oh my God, yeah. it's, it's, it's and hard to And they watch him on the basketball floor. Yeah. Like, he is, he's, he is a natural athlete, man. I think, you know, people want to look at him and, 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 Pick on him from the standpoint of like, is he that good or is it? I mean, just watch the film. 
Yeah. Just turn the film on. I mean, it, it, it's not going to lie to you. What a run STM's on right now, huh? You know, they uh, growing up in the Acadiana area, I went to Notre Dame High School, and they all, all the STM guys would always have a, a little bit of, I don't, I'm not going to call it jealousy, but we won a lot. You yeah, know, we, sure. we had a successful program with Coach Cook, and uh, but they are on a tear right I mean, now. I mean, four straight basketball, <laughs> it's two unbelievable. straight football, got the best quarterback in the country. Uh, yeah, it's good to be a Cougar right now. Uh, it's great to see you, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me in, man. And, Always. And uh, as Always. we, you know, when maybe when some of those sports bills get dropped yes. and I can come talk about the Would specifics, I've been, uh, I, I'm limited in what I can say sure. until everything's finalized. But, uh, you know, look, we're, we're, I know your, your viewers are interested in that. I, I promise you, we are, it is a priority for a lot of legislators. Um, and I, I say it again, you know, and I'm going to say it every time I come on here. If it's a priority for you, reach out to your legislators and make sure they know that you want them to pass it. And not only pass the bill, but we have to pass the taxing and the appropriations part as well. Because uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of legislators out there who just want to vote on the sports betting bill but go, I'm not voting on the tax. But sure. if they don't pass it, 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 it doesn't get enacted. And um, we're stuck here having this conversation a few months from now going, well, we missed a, missed a great opportunity for the state. Yes. Uh, I am very proud and uh, glad that you are representing the state of Louisiana. Uh, I don't know it, if he knows it yet, but he's probably the future governor of, <laughs> of Louisiana. And uh, he's great at it. Representative John Stefanski in the UDL, talking politics, talking sports, one of our good friends. We appreciate it. We We'll see him again soon. Legislative session gets going on April 12th.